the IMF is once again targeting El Salvador because of their support for Bitcoin. Welcome back, everyone. That's right. We are going to talk about El Salvador and we're going to talk about the IMF. Now, um, for the people who are not aware, El Salvador made Bitcoin legal tender back in 2021. And this drew attention from the IMF. Now, more accurately, it drew concern from the IMF because apparently, apparently, a country that chooses to use Bitcoin and legal tender, and even more so, a country that chooses to purchase Bitcoin for its own balance sheet, well, somehow that is of concern and somehow that is a really big risk to its population. And this is what the IMF would like you to believe. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into why the IMF is attacking El Salvador. Why are they specifically concerned about Bitcoin? And what can the IMF actually do to El Salvador if they don't comply or heed to the, recommend, to, to the IMF's recommendations about Bitcoin? Before we take a look at the IMF spokesperson's comments, let's take a look at the IMF's track record um, in terms of El Salvador and uh, the, I guess we'll say the the pressure that they've been putting on El Salvador. Because that's right, since 2021, the IMF has not stopped for a second. So right here, we could see a post from November 23rd, 2021. Bitcoin should not be legal tender in El Salvador. The following year, in 2022, we see this again. IMF urges El Salvador to scale back its push for Bitcoin as legal tender. Now, keep in mind, El Salvador had already made Bitcoin as legal tender. So you you, you can already start to get the impression that, that the IMF is living in this illusion. And they figure if they just keep projecting this illusory message along, that somehow everyone's just going to start to believe it, you know, and everyone's just going to start to go along with it. But it looks like El Salvador is not going along with it. And more specifically, President Nayib Bukele is not going along with it. And now again, in 2023, IMF says El Salvador's Bitcoin risks have not materialized, but should be addressed. So once again, right, they they're not going to say that they've been wrong. They're not going to say, listen, um, as the IMF, we uh, we made a mistake uh, on, on our thesis about Bitcoin, and we need to re-examine what we believe is true about Bitcoin. But instead, instead, this type of wording is much more beneficial to them, right? They're just saying, hey, listen, what we said hasn't played out yet, but, but we need to address this situation because, again, right? Uh, they are an authority figure um, that can see into the future and only they, with their benevolence and their their fake created SDRs, SDRs is what they give to countries, okay? The, the SDRs uh, are these, and I've talked about this before, um, they're called special drawing rights. And, and essentially what it is, is it's money made out of thin air uh, based on a basket of assets that is chosen by the IMF. And of course, they lend this crap out to different countries. And naturally, uh, these countries become beholden to the IMF. And um, they unfortunately have to do what the IMF says, uh, because essentially they're only around by virtue of the IMF lending them uh, this money with strings attached. We're going to fast forward to October 3rd, okay? Because oh, obviously the IMF is not giving up on this. Now, keep in mind, El Salvador has been accumulating Bitcoin since 2021. So now, the longer the experiment goes on, the less valid the IMF's concerns seem to be. But that doesn't stop the messaging, and it definitely doesn't stop the illusion that they're trying to create. So let's take a listen to IMF spokesperson Julie Kozak discuss Bitcoin and El Salvador. Okay. Um, so on El Salvador, uh, IMF staff have ongoing um, 
and an ongoing engagement with the Salvadorian authorities, and the objective is to reach agreement on a new IMF-supported program uh, that would uh, help with uh, the macroeconomic stabilization and adjustment and also uh, growth-enhancing reforms. Um, ongoing discussions are focused on policies to strengthen reforms that can be used to boost productivity and economic governance. Um, addressing risks arising from Bitcoin um, is a key element of, of these discussions. And of course, the goal is um, for the fund to be in a position to support a credible and well-sequenced policy package that is uh, designed by the, uh, by the authorities. Um, with respect to the, the details on, um, on Bitcoin, what we have recommended is a narrowing of the scope of the Bitcoin law, strengthening the regulatory framework and oversight of the Bitcoin ecosystem, and limiting uh, the public sector exposure uh, to, uh, to Bitcoin. Shout out to Sam Callahan, a uh, fellow Bitcoiner who put out that video on Twitter. Now, let's examine exactly what was said, because in all fairness, um, th those of us who have worked for large corporations uh, and have sat there and listened on many management and board of director meetings, you'll, you'll recognize the tone. Um, you'll also recognize similarities in the verbiage, right? Um, Julie Kozak said absolutely nothing. There was nothing concrete over there. What that was, was a lot of concern over the fact that El Salvador is not listening to the IMF about Bitcoin. This is the main issue. Now, another piece to this is you'll notice that Julie mentioned, um, the, be, Julie being the spokesperson for the IMF, specifically mentioned um, that there's risks to the macroeconomic picture for El Salvador, okay? And also, um, she mentioned a very vague uh, statement dealing with the narrowing of Bitcoin policy. So well, what does that mean? It means nothing. They don't know. They don't know yet. What they're saying, what essentially what they're looking for is a blind commitment from President Nayib Bukele, and more specifically, the country of El Salvador, okay? Um, they want a blind commitment to whatever the IMF is going to do and say in terms of regulatory framework for Bitcoin. This is, this is all they want, okay? And essentially, when a country takes the, uh, the SDRs from the IMF, the IMF issues what are called special drawing rights. Uh, these are essentially just shares created out of thin air uh, based on a quote unquote basket of goods, uh, which in all fairness, nobody knows if that basket of goods is actually held by the IMF. There's no auditors for any of this crap. Um, so uh, look, you can, you can think whatever you want, but if you ask me, uh, I believe it is money created out of thin air in order to, uh, create countries that are beholden to the IMF. And that helps the IMF push through regulations and frameworks from whoever it is that, you know, they're being told what to do, whatever group or groups, um, of people that are telling them what to do. So. So the IMF is clearly afraid of El Salvador, but more specifically because El Salvador is embracing Bitcoin. Now, what's really interesting about these comments made by Julie is the timing of these comments. Because just a few days ago, okay, prior to these comments that Julie Kaznock made, President Nayib Bukele uh, made a statement that the country is preparing to submit a 2025 budget that for the first time in decades will not require external debt. Bukele credits Bitcoin as a key factor in achieving this goal of financial independence. That's not good for these agencies, these giant, uh, we'll call them NGOs, um, these giant agencies that are not beholden to any countries or any form of belief or anything like that, just simply increasing their own power and reach, they don't like this, okay? This is not good. A country is not supposed to be able to dig themselves out of a hole on their own. And President Nayib Bukele 
is doing this. Now, as you guys know, I, I am not a, uh, you know, like I'm not a quote unquote El Salvador simp. Like I don't sit there and think like, oh, because they took Bitcoin as legal tender, it's the best thing in the world and blah, 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 the most wonderful country. Granted, I am always willing to give, um, give kudos for the, the work that is being done uh, for what I've been hearing. You know, the, the country itself is being cleaned up slowly but surely. There's been big strides made. I know a lot of people who are going there to visit uh, are giving positive, glowing reviews, and, and that is all wonderful, right? Rome wasn't built in a day. Stuff just doesn't, it doesn't just happen overnight, right? The the bigger the ship, the longer it takes to turn the ship around. And and that's, unfortunately, that is the, that is the truth. But also in this case, right? Um, El Salvador is kind of standing as a as a meter stick, right? It's it's proof that this this Bitcoin experiment is showing the world that hey, if we get our act together and we do the right and, and we do the right thing and we um, we implement some low time preference behaviors and ideas, well, we can actually dig ourselves out of the problem that we've gotten into. And right now, El Salvador is proving this. And that really scares the IMF, whose entire, entire raison d'etre, right, reason for being, is essentially enslaving nations with fake money. So, yeah, I can see why the IMF is scared. I can see why they do not want, um, they don't want El Salvador being able to finance themselves. Okay, and we see why they're attacking El Salvador. So, yeah, guys, this is part of the then they fight you stage. All of this is. And you know what? We got to take the wins when we can get them. And I do believe that this 2025 budget that President Nayib Bukele submitted um, with no external debt, I think that this is a great sign that this is actually working. Anyways, guys, that's all I wanted to talk about today. There's a massive storm in my area. I don't know if I'll catch you tomorrow. I may only be recording the day after. Anyways, uh, for everybody who is in Florida and in the path of this, uh, what is it, Hurricane Milton, stay safe. I will see you guys soon. Take it easy.